The man just came home. We've been bigging him up. We happy for him. We proud. G gave Joe Crack a call. And I was so honored because so much happened yesterday. The man got out of jail. Had his people pick up. He flew in a fight. They, everybody, I'm looking. He shot a video with Jim Jones. He's with Fab. He's with this. He's just, I mean, it's just too much shit going on. And he took the time out to call the big, big show. Kodak Black's first interview after being pardoned. How many motherfuckers you know have been pardoned? He came on here. Jewel Santana never told the story. Came out of jail. His first interview was right here. What's fucking with that? Nothing. People want to get be, become mayor in New York City. Shout out Isaac Wright Jr. We have that town hall Saturday. But they come on here. You want to talk to the community about the vaccine, about the, the, the uh, corona. Dr. Fauci comes right here. And so as I'm talking to this guy trying to negotiate, because, you know, you know, they try to call it an IG show or whatever. I don't even know what the fuck this is. What I know it is, it's popping. It's fucking lit. And so you turn, little Uzi Bird. He, he didn't go to the mother guys to talk about the diamond. He came here. Charlie Green Eyes, what's up? And so as I'm talking to him, I start getting a little excited. And I say, I'm not lying to you. The other morning, I pick up, I put on the TV. It's Wendy Williams. Oh, my friend Fat Joe, he wanted the realest. Let's take it to the Fat Joe show. She shows the clip with me and Uzi Vert, which I appreciate. Couple of minutes later, I turned the the, the, the dial. Yeah, you can say what you want. You can say what you want. Joe's universe. Joe did everything. He's Christopher Columbus. It's fucking real. When I bring the guests on here, it's always you don't know who I know. Okay. Boom. I look at the fucking Wendy Williams. Shout out to Wendy. She bigs us up. The show. Primetime TV. I changed the channel. And one of the commentators on ESPN right the second after is like, like my guy says in the Fat Joe show, you don't know who I know. This is in real fucking life. This is reality. I am not lying. That is what is going on with hip hop culture and this fucking show. Shout out to Rock. Revolt TV, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'm not lying. And so Kanye West taught me that if you don't talk about your blessings, if you don't talk about your successes, they won't do it for you. And so they make you think this is some regular shit. And I don't even tell you who's coming on. I talk shit like this to you. I press one button. Next thing you know, pow. You know what I know. Lorenz Tate. Stop fucking lying to yourself. You've been lying on me your whole life. Yo, the only guy still rocking is you and the OGs. And this. They're really not actually rocking, bro. The light. The light. The light. Okay, the let light. me not go there. Because I love, I love, I love every single OG in the world. I can't lie to you. I love every OG. But I'm not talking about 20 years ago albums and shit like that. I'm talking about right now. And it's for you. What's that? Oh, yeah, Devin Booker replaces uh, AD. Shout out to my guy, Julius Randle, from the New York Knicks. Stay in the light, crack. Right now. You 
acting like these guys are doing this? They're not doing it. At fucking all. And let me tell you something. This is for the people. This is for you. You look through Instagram. You see something you like. You watch it for the 30 seconds. If you really, 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 really like it. You back up. You watch it twice. If she's really, 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 really twerking. You might watch it three times. Gone. That's a minute and a half. Every night. I got you on here an hour, hour and a half straight. When I posted hundreds of thousands of people. And it's all positivity. There's no fuckery involved. Not one fuckery. You have never heard Fat Joe bring on a guest in here. And jam them up. It's not what we into. We into sunshine delight. Making people happy. And so we come in here. And you go. We show them love. Everybody feels unguarded. And they talk about shit they never talked about. They said man Joe ain't trying to jam me up. So let me. Talk about some shit I never talked about. And it goes viral. And if you ask me, I'm not a computer guy. I don't even know what the fuck viral is. I know not too many people know more hip hop than me. I know that much. And there's some guys who concentrate on thinking they know hip hop. I think you have to play in the game. I think you need a couple of anthems. I think you need to be a real rapper. A real superstar who really rocks stadiums and shit. And been to the favelas in Brazil. And been to the fucking villages in Africa. Or the caserios in Puerto Rico. Like you really, in order to do this shit, this commentating shit. You got to do this for real. This is a family show. My daughter's 14 years old. She is the executive producer of the show. And so I don't give a fuck about all these people and all that shit they talking. I don't come out of my house. I've been in New York. I'm driving big, big show, sucking traffic. The FedEx guy, big, big show, sanitation guy, big, big show, fucking construction worker. He looked like he's, he's black, but he's white. He's been working so fucking hard. With the fucking helmet. Joe, I see you tonight. We for the fucking people. Could he shut the fuck up, Uncle Dan, in there so loud? Yeah. Shout out to my dad. T Trey Young got snubbed. He deserved to be an all star. <laughs> From Atlanta, Trey, Trey Young got snubbed. Get the fuck out of here. Don't, yo, I'm going to throw you out the house, Mayor, if you diss my Knicks. You're full of shit. Well, who's your team, Mayor? LeBron. Anybody who wins. LeBron? LeBron. Me too. I'm, I'm LeBron after. But this year, the Knicks are making the playoffs. So what if they make the playoffs? Right, that's a big deal. Yo, Dan, you serious? Who's your team, Danny? Golden State. You're so full of shit. I'm going to the game Saturday. They invited me yesterday. I'm going to the game Saturday. We're going to so the I got to take the... Nah. <laughs> I'm not you got kidding. Big Head Wilson over here. There's only two. There's only 10%. There's really nobody can go in there. Yeah. And they told me I'm not sitting courtside. I said, I don't give a fuck. I sit in a booth. Yeah, give me a hot dog and some popcorn. I'm in the game watching my favorite team. It's a dream come true. I, I used to sit up in the upper deck. Michael Jordan was this small. MJ's my guy. Yeah, don't. You want me to clout chase? <laughs> You want me to fucking clout chase? <laughs> you motherfuckers don't know a clout chaser. Oh. Don't fuck with me. Yo. Yo. MJ's my guy. Oh, you thought I was lying? Well, you don't know who I know. I'll pull out his fucking beeper number next. <laughs> and so I was born for this shit. E Philly was good. 
Butter, hey, butter's like legendary. I know I'm on my bullshit tonight, guys. I know, I know I'm on my bullshit tonight. Shout out to my dentist, Dr. Fasham, and uh, Dr. Sheeler. I went in there today. They did a number on me. Very nice, painless. Got a little whitening. And but the the craziest shit is now my dentist has a uh, camera crew in the dentist. And so I'm in there and it, and I'm uh, it, and and she's family. I you see I repost the shit. And I'm just like, damn, this shit is like, it's really big brothers really watching everywhere. Dr. Fajam, I love you. You are the best dentist in the universe. Without further ado. Hold up. Damn, you studying my moves, man. <laughs> Why you studying my moves, man? These people don't know. They not up on this shit. They not on to this now. Not never can you copy this stuff. You just can't do it, man. Oh, no. oh, oh, she went that old thing back. What that old thing back? Ah. Yo, Marlo, what's good, baby? Hey. Ah. <laughs> All right. What's up, Marlo? Congratulations. You know I had to come with the sunshine. Yo, Marlo, you make the boys go crazy. Oh, boy. Really? I what told, I husband? swear to God, I told a couple of my boys that I had Marlo coming on here, and they was like, <laughs> she got so that thing on her. Yo, Marlo, what you been working out or something? Because it, it, it's just, it's like, it's too noticeable. Oh, yeah, I'm working you know, out. I'm the guy I'm said Marlo out. was like stepping. I mean, you always been bad. You always been fly. No, but you know but, what's crazy, Joe? I went, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. You know I keep it 100. Mm -hmm. So I've been getting M sculpting on my stomach, right? It's like non-surgical. They'll do a you know, little thing to tighten the belly up. The icing and thing? Like, the ice thing? The icing? No, it's like a machine, and it vibrates your stomach. I mean, it makes you feel like you did 60,000 crunches before. And I've had yeah, I, yeah, my, I'm going to keep it real. You know what? My, my, one of my doctors got that shit. It's some shit that it acts like you're doing sit-ups. Yes, guys, get it. Over. He said, when you let it go, that shit hurt. It works. One man for You have to Dr. drink Ron a lot of water. Shit. Is my necklace on? But you have to. When I tell you, it really works. And so many guys get it. It's crazy. No, it works. My doctor does it. Dr. Ron. Are Dr. you serious? Ron does it. No, I'm telling shit. you, when, I, when I'm in there, you walk you around this house and the shit is like you're doing sit ups. Yes, and you see basketball players in there with their hoodies on. So many guys are like coming in, getting it done. It's crazy. But uh, so oh. I've been working out and I just started the keto diet. So, you know, I got to get super fine. We got some stuff coming. Well, you up got before. skinny and the butt got bigger. It's, it's crazy. Because like, be my waist you. went smaller. I'm telling so you what friend. the guys is telling me. <laughs> Hold on, they're trying to fix my. I don't want that closet. You know, that's good there. I mean, you but always fly, Marlo. Marlo, there's never been a day, right? Mm -hmm. I think so, too, in the, in, in the hip-hop way. I never take a day off, either. I give him a little something, a little North Face Gucci every time, right? Uh -huh. Ever since I ever met you in my life, and they don't know that I know you, and I know, you're that's my sister, crazy. and we hang out all the time, and, and it's been a little while because of COVID, but we family. And I tell these people all the time, they don't know who I know, but they think I be lying and shit. <laughs> they think no it's so funny because i was telling my friend i'm like i know joe i know lorena the baby like we all kick it we didn't kick to that college like we're all dinner together when you're here in atlanta at dallas all and, the time. And you know what it's so crazy because i got a friend of mine uh he's rich the mayor he's back here and 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 i'm thinking <laughs> I'm, the question i'm gonna ask you is the same shit everybody always asks me how the mayor got money like that? And ever since I met Marlo, you you wear like a forty thousand dollar outfit every day. I'm like, how the fuck Marlo got rich like that? <laughs> I didn't fell off. What you? I didn't fell off. I'm sorry. Now I'm strictly sorry. No, Ma Marlo, I have never seen you in less than a ten thousand dollar outfit. That is Damn. not true, Joe. Stop. That is not your friends true. know. Your, whoever's there with you no. playing with the camera, they I know. know I ain't lying. <laughs> They well, know I ain't lying. You bitch. Well, you, you, 
you know how me and Catherine do it. And you know this is without no TV. This was when the season was off. You know yeah, this I mean, ain't even Catherine. got nothing to do with TV. I call up Catherine today. I said, Catherine, I got Marlo. I need some help on some questions. She was like, well, you know, me and Marlo, we friends, family, family. I don't watch the show. I don't got nothing to do with it. I can't ask you questions about, we just family. And I'm like, <laughs> and I said, damn, we, we really, we, we really family, family with Marlo. We really ain't, it ain't about a show. It ain't about. Oh, yeah. It ain't um, no shit. That's 100. But I asked all the girls I know um, about the show and stuff like that. And so. But wait, let's go back. I'm a, I haven't done this in so long, Joe, because, you know, when I first got on the show, that's all they were worried about. Where you get your money from? Da, 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 da. So oh, really? Just, they've asked you these questions before? Oh, my God. They asked those questions a thousand times. No, I'm asking like you first... a realistic question, Marlo. I have stood next to you and you have $10,000 boots on. Don't fucking lie. Oh, I like, stood next to you and you had $30,000 sneakers on. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I rap. I don't know if you the before, connect. Before you if you down with El Chapo or what? Like, I'm Look, talking you to gonna... But listen, I watched your show. You was like, look, I was a sneaker here before I was making money. I was getting all the exclusives. <laughs> okay, okay, Marlo. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So you grew up in the foster care. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to you. You made a non-for-profit mm -hmm. uh, to help foster care children. Tell us about that. You went back and, and you're trying to help others. That's really important for the people. Oh, yeah, it's super important. And, Joe, that's something anyone that knows me, y'all know how I am. When I come out, when we go eat, I know I don't have money like you. You offer to pay. I'm going to offer the tip or do something. <laughs> but um, just growing up in the hood from uh, Florida, you know, my mom, substance abuse, drugs, alcohol, abusive. I was in five different foster homes in St. Petersburg, Florida. So I was in five different foster homes. And... My is it hard if you're prettier in a foster home? I was in five different ones. I know, but is it harder if you're like beautiful in a foster home? No, I wasn't beautiful. Then I had a Jerry curl, I had like, <laughs> Kmart clothes, high waters. None of the guys didn't like me. Then Bobo, one guy I met named Bobo, he was real short. He wanted to date me. So I picked him up and kissed him. Everybody was cracking on me. So, you know, then I didn't think, and what's crazy, Joey, I'm all off subject, but let me just tell you, back then, these are my real teeth, right? They're a little crooked. You see, I got them crooked there, mm -hmm. a little overbite. So growing up, I got picked on because they were so big. So whenever you mm -hmm. see pictures of me as a kid, I'm like this. And I'm oh, like, you don't yeah, show them your teeth. Nice. I never showed my teeth because of mm. me being bullied and people talking about, you got them big chicken teeth, you know, da, da, and these are my teeth. <laughs> and these are your teeth. And so, and, and, and so, um, so you went back, you make a non for profit. I mean, a non profit, the non profit is called Glam It Up. Because, like I told you, growing up in foster care, the foster parents got like a check each month, a certain amount. So we used to have to go to Kmart. I don't know if you know about Kmart from Brooklyn. I know Kmart. Okay, and when we go in Kmart back in my day, it used to be a, a blue sign that used to go off. And that was like, it was dirt cheap. I used to be so ashamed. I mean, no cute cur uh, clothes, Jerry curl, picked on one with the popular girls. So finally- Marlo, we was on welfare, I had food stamps. Oh, I, no, uh, let me take you there. You didn't, know that you didn't do this one. My mm. mom used to give me the food stamps and I had to go buy some candy and keep enough change so me and my brothers and sisters can um, get a cigarette. Some buy cigarettes. Cigarette. Yeah, I've done all that. You can spend you know, it all. Yo, Marlo, I don't wipe like my ass with wet newspaper. You ain't got to talk. Yeah. Don't talk. These people know. Don't try to outdo me on some bum shit because oh, I know oh, it we well. can go there. We like can that. go there. I you know, I, I've and... been no AC sleep on the floor in the summer because it's cooler. Don't okay. do that to me because oh, no, my no. mother's watching you this and up, she's going to kill me. Don't. <laughs> When you're waking up, you got to stand in front of the oven. Your mom had to boil water for our tubs. I can go there, but people don't know that because they just think, oh, the fashion. I'm like, only if y'all knew my story with the welfare cheese, making sugar rice. Like, yeah, so yeah, I'm we done did all sugar. that. I'm going to be. We did all that. I mean, you know what I tell people all the time? And it's our, it's, it's our fault, but. People never see the struggle. They always see the finished product. That's all they see. And they don't know about everything everybody went through. Mm -hmm. And just because we love fashion or we love to have a great time, 
It doesn't mean we're rubbing it in people's faces. In fact, if you really listen to the details of the story of growing up foster care, not having nothing, and now becoming successful, it's letting our people know you too should be inspired. You right. too can become successful. Like exactly, exactly. And not to hold, push someone down. Because I realized with me being black, it's where you get your money from. You got a sugar daddy. No, sweetheart. My grandmother who just passed a year ago, Ari, any of the people that know me know my grandmother means the world to me. It was my foster grandmother. What she taught me, Joe, was about credit. Credit. Mm. My credit card says a member since 1996. I graduated from mm. high school in 94. Mm. With a so she taught me credit and investment properties. I bought my first home in St. Petersburg when I probably graduated from high school with my foster grandmother, the fifth foster home. Mm -hmm. And that lady was an Aquarius like me. She took me in Ari Homes. Everyone knows the homes in St. Petersburg, Florida, like no other. Her kids was like, why are you dealing with her? She went to jail. She was in these foster homes. We don't know her. And she was like, look, it's something about that girl I love. Y'all are privileged. And I'm going to be here for it. And Joe, she was always there for me. What's always. so important about people don't realize that investing time in the youth and the people coming up really matter. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't care if I've hung out with you and we've been pissy drunk, we've been dancing. I have never physically... Hung out with you or had a conversation where you don't bring your grandma up from the foster thing. Oh, yeah. Every right. single time I have ever talked to you or watched you, you know, because my grandma, she's so fly. <laughs> she's and, and she passed away last year. Yeah. Yeah. She did. And Ari she? My Ari. So that was someone who taught me love, though. Like with me growing up, my, my mom was the side chick. I'm just giving you my whole book. My mom was the side chick to my dad. He was married. We were in a small town. So I feel that's why I'm not in a committed relationship now or married because I have trust issues with men. And it's like the man who was supposed to love me, how could you let me go on foster care because my mom was your side chick? You know, mm -hmm. like you should have, if she accepted you, your wife accepted you, you should have accepted me. And I always look at girls now when they're dating or a guy have a child on them. It's like, how are you taking him back? But you ain't accepting the baby. So some chicks don't even know. They think they're better than me. And I'm looking at them like, you ain't even the type of chick I want to hang with. Like, if, I, you, if we're dating and you didn't have the baby on me and I take you back, Joe, that baby coming mm -hmm. with us. We're going to see that baby on the weekends. That baby going to be in the house with us. Because I was a foster child. So we ain't treating that child no damn different. And this just you know, that's, that, that's pretty amazing that you say that. And, uh, you know, life comes with, di with, with different obstacles, different things. And true love, you fight through it. And But I can't believe, Marlo, you've never met a guy that you looked into his eyes and said, maybe this guy loves me for me? You know what? I have a guy in my life now who I know I love. He loves. He's a Virgo, if you're watching. Hey. But um, it's just that we keep stuff on the low. But it's like, I know I have trust issues. If he's watching, I'm like, what are you doing today? I thought you was doing something. It's like, I really, I don't trust y'all. I have trust issues. I just feel y'all, it's it's sad. And it's something I probably need therapy for. Everyone says it, but um, I'm good in here with my mess, with my chaos, with me working. Um, my credit's good. So it's like, if you're here, you need to be here because I want you to be here. You're not going to be disrespecting me. You're not going to get Let me tell you a story, Marlo. Let me tell you a story. My fans, you know, well, the people who view the show all the time. Okay. Uh, they might have heard it. When I grew up in the projects, uh, my school was across the street. When I was a kid, kid, my elementary school was across the street for us projects. I would look out the window to know the weather, right? So whether it was cloudy, it was, you know, New York's cold. It's four seasons. Yeah. Every single morning, about six something in the morning, it was a little lady, super big, short lady, I don't want to diss her, but she was really, really big, like the original Fat Joe, short. She would walk past my window every day with his, and she was Spanish, with a skinny, tall black guy. The black guy was like seven foot tall, and they would hold hands and walk pace, and they would walk to the bus stop every day in love. I see, that's to smiling at this. 
And I knew since a kid that everybody can find somebody to love them. I always yeah. knew there's <laughs> somebody for everybody. Uh -huh. I do agree with that. And I do agree that a lot of us, it's from our past, it's from previous relationships, and we have to let it go. Because yes. my manager, Ty and Justin, been, they're 37, younger than me, been together like 17 years. And I'm like, you ain't never cheated on her? Like, you know, I get along with the guys more than the girls. You know, I'm mm -hmm. hanging with the guys because I'm not mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, Joe. I could be around you on the run and be like, shy, goodbye, that's Marlo, whatever. But he's like, no, I know what I have at home, and I'm afraid of losing it. So mm. once I get that guy that lets me know she's brown skin, deep, raspy voice, big feet, like, you just have to let me know I'm here at all times. I don't give a damn what the fuck you see on Instagram, all the and do you have And do you have a preference, like the style of a guy? Like, could your girlfriend be like, yo, that's your type? Or it's like... He has the, uh, his high jeans and teeth have to be nice, but oh, if not, I get it fixed. Fucking fat. <laughs> I mean, even if you're my friend, you can't stink. It's like, oh, no. your hygiene. And I'm going to dress you up. So I'm, I'm like Terrell. I'm baby If Terrell, I got a friend you know, that his breath stinks, I will give him three gums and give myself three gums. Not to make him feel bad, but just, yo, bro, take some fucking gum. Like, I've never, I've never stunk in my life. No, that's and just so awful. I smell so good that even if I've been in jail for like two <laughs> days in the bullpen, I walk out of there still smelling good. Smelling good. We're gonna I am not out. with that shit. You Hello. cannot stink and be around me. It will well, not happen. breath can't even be stink talking to me because I'm going to be like, some up with your breath. Like, no, that's you need to go break your teeth. <laughs> mm -mm. Yes, Yo, for real. Marlo, for, for, for you always trendy, moving, doing your thing. Uh, uh, I hear you adopted your two nephews. Yes. The last year and a half, Joe, my life changed tremendous. Like, I salute all mothers, all fathers like you who are in the house with your children. Like, it's surreal. I still can't even believe it. It's Michael and William. They've been with me like a year and a half now. And, I and how's it going? I mean, it's good to have two guys uh, to hold you down. I mean, they're going to hold you down in the future. How long are they? The 11 and 12, no, 12 and 13. Michael just turned 13. 12 and 13. Oh, wow. So and you even um, have so to move. I even have to move totally different then because I'm not getting ready to let them see me with different guys. No guy ain't going to be laying up in my bed because I got a 13-year-old who's sneaking on Instagram, even though he's not supposed to be on it. And, you know, they're on social media. But um, it's been the most amazing thing. I'm so tough. And I'm not affectionate because my mom, my mom, they give me kisses and hugs. It was like, get your ass up. Do what the fuck you got to do. Da -da. So with, when they came, they're more like kisses, good nights. They were used to sleeping in the bed with their mom because my sister has mental issues. You know, she has issues. And it's just like, I'm like, the men, my mental illness. Mom. That's that's what happens. She has mental illness. And, she does. She has mental and illness, you know that stuff and, that if you don't take your med, people don't even understand. That's something I can't even begin to act. Shout out to Brad Cole. Brad Cohen. He's uh he got Kodak Black and uh Little Wayne Pardon. He's a lawyer from Florida. He's on the check-in and he say hi Marlo. And so uh <laughs> yeah. and uh, but mental illness is so real. So and real. I'm gonna tell you something. I, you know, I'm in my car. And I see these guys on the side talking to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I, tr it, I, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I try to figure out how to happen. Like, I, like, like, um, and is there a medicine that can help that? Well, I do say there's a medicine because when I see it, people don't even realize when I'm in the car with people, they're like, oh, he crazy, he this. And I'm like, chill out because it touches home for me because I mm. remember as a little girl in the projects growing up we knew my sister had issues but in black communities it was be quiet leave my baby alone there ain't nothing wrong with my baby and I knew it wasn't right but it was you just went along with it so now with my sister being older and 
just dealing with life and having nine children and just, you know, living life and experiencing life, it hits the fan. And now it's like, oh, she did this. She got problems. She needs to. But if we would have addressed, we would have addressed it back then, it probably wouldn't be as bad. And you the know, back then, with her, back then, back then, like I think, uh, oh man, I got cousins watching and all this. Like, like I could really get in trouble. But I've always thought, not mental illness, but I've always thought if my father got observated, they would have gave him some type of pill to calm the fuck down. Some somehow, cause he okay. on from zero to one hundred. Since 60s, like, and even now, I go to his house and be like, yo, you ain't shit. This is that. And I'd be like, and I said, man, if they, if we took this man somewhere, they would give him a pill, like, exactly. to calm his ass down. And, um, and so in the hood, people got this illness, and so they drink, and they smoke weed, and they do they ways that you don't realize that you really got a problem other than going to get the help. And with me, I don't, I didn't have, you know, what your sister, God, God bless, had. But I went through a deep depression for two years straight when big pun, my sister passed, giving birth. She was in a coma for eight months. And while giving, right, my grandfather, all three of them died at the same time. So it was just too much. Dang right, yeah. so I got depressed. So I could look out the window, it could be the sunniest day in the world. I thought it was snowing. Yeah, depression um, is it, real too. Depression no, is too serious. real. Like, if Lorena got up and was going to go with her friends to lunch and smelt good, I was mad sitting on the couch. I used mm -hmm. to sleep in the tub with no water going. I know real depression. Exactly. And so I went and got help. And two years later, I snapped out of it. But uh, I do know how your own mind can fuck with you. Because, it, it, look, if I start a beef right now in New York, I could go to L.A. and hide. But if you got mental illness, you go to L.A., the shit with you. That's true. You can't get rid of it. The shit is with you, so you got to figure it out. I, I call it like, it's almost like a Rubik's Cube. But anybody who's having any type of depression out there, who's having any type of issues, if you can, seek help and try to get help. Yes, and do see therapy. The biggest thing, and just thank God, and I was talking with you today. They just took her to the doctor today, one of her friends. And she's like, they gave her the medicine. She's on the medicine. And we can notice a difference. She's calm. But she doesn't like being on the medicine because she yeah. feels it makes her feel some kind of way. But you have to get help. Be in a circle of people who love you. And you just, you got to take the medicine. I'm sorry, you have to. Especially if it's at a certain level. And I know a lot of people are Yeah, because it, a lot of people, you know, and that's for all type of illness, not just mental. Like, I had a brother, uh, he passed away last year. Um, one of my best friends growing up, his name was Black Dave, and he's the best baseball player in the world. He had epilepsy, but he didn't yeah. like taking the medicine. So when he took it, he was cool. When he ain't taking it, he would have a seizure in the middle of the softball game in the park. And we would tell him, and he, he was bigger than me, cock diesel. He could beat me up. So if I told him shit, he'd get mad and chase me trying to beat me up. But <laughs> they never want to take the fucking medicine. And so if you got an illness like that where you have the medicine, you got to take it. It's, it's simple. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to take it, and you have to. I pray for the people. If you have family to where I told them, like, hey, to her children, I'm like, it's like five of y'all as adults. If you got to do Monday and Tuesday is your day and you got to put it in our mouth, you got to make them take it. It's like, we have to work together. But we really, as a community, has have to really do something for mental illness. Because it's bad, Joe. It's bad. And it's sad. It's, it's really not sad. even bad or sad. It's scary. Because it's scary. You're right. It's scary. These people, they're talking to themselves. And I'm in the car and they on the side and I'm like, who the fuck they talking to? Do they have an earpiece? And then I'm like, what happened? Like, what happened to these people? Because this shit is like, one minute yeah, you probably have... like, what went on in your head? Like, and I'm thinking to myself, like, shit, I done been through stuff. I've been through five different foster homes. I didn't went to jail before. I didn't went through some tough shit. I'm like, people, I'm on a platform, you and I both, where people judge you every day. I could look mm -hmm. on Instagram and the shit people say about me. 
If I was weak, I'd been and jumped off a damn bridge. People are. Oh no, they try it. They try it. They yeah, like they Britney said. Spears. They've been trying to kill her. Like Britney Spears, the media. Yeah. They were has evil been trying to kill her. I think Tiger Woods yeah. is the new Britney Spears. I think they're trying right. to kill her. It's and they sad. do this shit to try to kill you. And and mm -hmm. the fans or whoever, they want to talk shit. Let me tell you something. The illest shit, I say this almost every night. The illest shit I heard, 50 Cent told me recently, he said, there's no sympathy for winners. Mm -hmm. And so because you're winning and you look good you have it and all, you got yep. a show, they can talk all the shit they want about you and, and run you through the dirt. And don't know, I'm the toughest. I, you know, with it being, me being an Aquarius, I'm big on zodiac signs. People think like, oh, she's so tough, or she's so strong, and she wear five-inch heels. I'm in that goddamn bed. I cry plenty nights. I'm in there yeah, crying got like, Lord. I'm in there like, Lord, am I making the right decisions with these boys? Lord, bless my sister. We go through shit like everyone else, but people don't feel that. And I get up, I'm like, all right, you got goddamn 15 minutes to cry. Now get your ass up. Michael William, come on, get up, go eat, let's pray. It's like, and I can't teach them how to be a man, but I'm going to teach them everything I know I wish I had, like a, a father figure and what a man should do for a woman. Like open the car door, pray with me, pray with me before we eat, like take the trash out, just little stuff. And it's like, I never saw that in me. Like I'm calling the school. I'm like, did you do your homework? I just had to hire a new damn tutor. It's just life will change you. And you can never say never because you never know what God has in store for you. And that's, that's real. a fact. That's a fact. And we take it. And I tell people every day on this show, good or bad, <clears throat> man, you got to praise God. You got to believe in God. Absolutely. And just know that life, man, sometimes it might, you know, my uncle Dan, He's what? You five or six years older than me? Six. He's six years older than me, and he looks young. And he wow. never drank. He never smoked a cigarette. Never smoked shit. If he got a headache, he won't take Tylenol. Look, me too, right? I know. And, I um, drink. I'm like, people who don't drink, I'm like, and nah, I nah, nah, nah. But today. he don't drink nothing, so he looks young. We could put him against anybody else's age, and he's smoking them, right? And so wow. yesterday, I was talking to him, and we was having a conversation, and I think I look young, right? Oh and then he said, he said, you know what, Joe, when you get my age, you won't look as young as me because you're, you, you, no, no. He said, your shoulders are too heavy. <laughs> you care too much. Somebody has What's a your problem. sign, Joe? I'm a Leo. So he's oh, like, yeah, you care about he says, you care too much. You wear too much. You, 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 it weighs too much on your shoulders, Joe. You care about what people go through and stuff like this. And um, he has a point. It'll take a toll on you. And Joe, I will say this, and I just had a birthday. I just turned 45. I've realized right now at 45, you got to start saying no. And you got to just do what you're going to do. Like the other day, I'm not going to say because I know you're probably, I swear to probably God, watching. Somebody just told me this yesterday and, and was like, yo, because they said, listen, <clears throat> let me explain something to you. They say, it's sad, but keep that. Everybody, you got to start saying no. It's sad, but they say, everybody can't go. Everybody can't and, go. And, and what they're saying is, you might love your friends, you might love your family member, but you're trying to elevate to a level that they can't see. And so they're scared of you growing and that elevating. Part. So they want to bring you back down. So, and then you turn around, and as much as you want to help this person, you look around, and the truth is, everybody can't go. Everybody can't go. You know what my granny used to say? You can take the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. I've tried to help people, and I just realized some people just stuck there. When I go home, certain family, they're stuck there, and I got to let them go because. I love it there to visit, but I'm like, babe, I'm trying to go over here now. I didn't been over in the hood long enough. I don't mind coming back visiting, but I'm trying to elevate the different heights. You feel know I me? Mean? Yeah, and it's been a problem for me because I was the ghetto of the most ghetto. I was a bad guy at one time, Marlo, like a real bad guy. What's wrong and with that? It bothers me because I taught some of these guys the tricks. I taught I taught them this bullshit, this shit they on. And so they look at me like, yo, you trying to change. You with the rich people now. You trying to, you trying to leave. You taught me this shit. 
right? Yeah. And, and and so I try to tell them, listen, let me grow. Let me get, let me get wrong to with where growth. I need to go to where I could turn around and maybe help you, bro. Like, I, I don't know. And then, and, then, and then it goes back to, you got to know when to say no. And you got to know that everyone's not going to be able to go. Mm -hmm. And it's, then it's, that makes it's, your immediate family, you're going to have to say no. Because really, Joe, too, I've realized all the money. I bought a house for my mom years. When I bought my place, I bought my mom a house. I was taking care of my sister. My one sister has nine kids. The other one has four. The other one has three. So I'm like auntie of the year. And what I realized, I handicapped them. And when I said no, it was, I'm going to call Bravo. I'm, I'm like, call. Give me some ratings. Call, baby. Because I was in foster care. I wasn't even... No, they a, did it They did it to me, Marlo. They did it to me. Uh, it's too lengthy. But um, one thing Fat Joe don't go for is extortion in any shape or form. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to do what you have to do to me because you ain't going to extort me. That part. For right there. nothing. You might as that well part. kill me. It can come with a smile. <laughs> it, 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 ah, Simone. My girl Simone, she hooked me up with some, with some, uh, preserve your peace. She hooked me up with some questions for you. She's a fan. She's my massage oh. therapist up here. And she's All the right. one who told me you got to say no. You got to know how to say no. Joe. You have to say no. And, um, and so, uh, it's crazy, but, but, but it's like that. And so I won't go for that. So I've had people tell me, Oh, I'm gonna go say you ain't do this, or I'm gonna this and this. and they've done it, and 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 it hurts, but I gotta go through it. You have to, and you have to choose. You you have a family, and even it can, family can be the main people sometimes break you down. But I was growing up like God didn't bless me. I got to make sure my mama's straight, my sister's straight, and I just realized no. Call me if you want to go to school, if you want to take a trade. Don't call me asking for no damn money no more. You can't do that. You can't call me for stuff. What I'm doing, let's get you a prepaid credit card. Let's get your credit right. Let me put you on one of my credit cards. I need you to want it because as soon as shit hit the van, somebody just had an accident. And as soon as something happened, they're calling me, well, I need money for this. You got to figure this shit out. If I wasn't here, you would figure it out. Figure it out. You're an adult. Yeah, that's figure a fact. it out. And that's a fact. And I've, I've learned that too. Uh, I don't want to throw my family way under the bus, but I had... I'm being real because other people... No, no, no. I'm telling you, I had an opportunity because my brother uh, was the big dog in the family. My brother got... He was getting big money, right? And he had such a big heart. And every Friday, I would see family members, aunts and uncles and everybody line up and he would sit there, and I'm not lying, Dan. I'm not lying. He would sit there and give everybody money. <clears throat> he would buy everybody furniture for their house and cars. And one day, he fucked up. He got on drugs, and nobody opened the door for him. Nobody, nobody helped him out. The person and that so was there when I, And so God, let me tell you something. I believe in some people got to learn from experience. I believe in if I see some shit happen to somebody and it yeah. fucked up their life, I don't have to let that happen to me. I can learn through their mistakes. And so that when I see my brother, how people was turning their back on him, at this time I ain't got no money like that. But I see what they was doing to my brother. So then all of a sudden, God blesses this family again. Holy Christ, Fat Joe's famous and he's rich now. Exactly. They come and they line up on Friday. And I tell him, listen, I'm Ruby's son, but I'm a different kid. I'm not Junior. So I seen what y'all did to my to, to my brother, and you ain't going to have that type of party with me. I'm not I doing it. it. So oh, Joey, a piece of shit or whatever, whatever. Oh, it, nah, bro. I already seen this <laughs> play out. And yeah, God, he puts these things in your face so <clears> you <throat> can learn from the experience. Yeah, that's true. And I'm not telling you I haven't helped every single person in my family because I pretty much have helped. Same here. I can shit. relate. 
I still I'm have out. I got I'm one of them before I bought three Frankfurter trunks and I never seen one. I kept driving around the fucking hospital. He kept saying, Joey, I'm going to have a Frankfurter truck. And, 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 and I give him the money and I drive in front of Bronx Devin. I don't see the Frankfurter truck. I don't see him for eight months. I go to him, Joey, I got a great idea. What? It's a Frankfurter truck. And Frankfurter truck? Like the motherfucker don't remember he asked me for the fucking eight grand last time. All right, uncle such and such. Here you go, my brother. Here's the eight. Go get a Frank for the truck. Two months later or something, because I'm famous, I'm talking. I come by Bronx stepping on the hospital. No Frank for the truck. No truck. About man. six months later, I see my uncle again. The motherfucker hit me three times for the same Frank for the truck. And I never saw the Frank for the truck. Yeah, at the end and of so, the day, though, I it's just saying no and knowing that you can't take everybody with you. Everybody ain't going with you. Because I was you feel guilty sometimes because I'm like, damn, I got the money over here. I could go buy them a car. I could go buy them some Chanel or Gucci too. But I'm not doing that shit no more. Like I said, if you want to do hair, send me somewhere for me to send you for hair school. If you want to work on your credit, I'm not doing that shit. If it ain't Christmas or your birthday, I ain't doing it no more. These two boys have made me just see the light. Because right now I got to pay for tutors. I pay for Kumon. I'm paying to get damn dress locked up. They want to go on vacation. Now it's like the money I was blowing, I'm spending it where hopefully it's going to make a difference. And I'm like, these people are grown when I was giving money to. These boys need to know you should go on vacation. You should work hard and you get allowance. So, Joe, I'm telling you, I'm at the point where it's no. If it ain't a holiday and if you're not calling me about a business or, hey, sis, I cut yards. I want to get some lawnmowers. Don't call Marlo. I can't do yeah, it. No. Somebody just said all you should do is pray for him. It's true. We got to pray for him. Yeah, I got it. Because it's like, you know, my <clears throat> thing is I might have paid for 100 funerals. I said this shit the other day. Let me tell you something, Marlo. I gave more money away in my lifetime than I actually have. That I, I can relate. No, in <laughs> <I> the bank. <laughs> Like, I've I, actually given away. Could you say that, your mayor? I have given away I more relate. money than I have in the fucking bank. I Joe, I said that to someone the other day when it was called. I said, if it wasn't for y'all me giving, I would have so much more. So right now, <laughs> I'm going to do something big for me. I'm going to share with the people, but I'm cutting people off. I'm make Marlo is first. Because with this pandemic, I could be gone tomorrow. I could be in the car as much as we travel. I'm making sure I'm okay because I don't have any children. I don't have anything I do for you as a plus. That's and right. And Marlo, let me ask you something. It bugs me out. And I'm, you know, I live in Miami as well. Mm -hmm. It bugs me out to see that Atlanta never closed and they in the club with no mask every night. And are the people, is the government of Atlanta? lying about the people dying of COVID over there? Because it got to be more people dying than they're saying. It, uh, it, and, and Florida, <laughs> you know, my brother, the champ, and I love him to death, Floyd Mayweather, I just seen him have six birthday parties in, in Miami with 3,000 people, no masks. I want to know, it, 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 are people dying and we're not hearing Listen, the number? It, I don't know about the numbers, but what I can tell you is that Atlanta has never closed down. Atlanta having damn parties. Atlanta, I've been invited to some of the top parties doing COVID. And I'm like, are y'all fucking serious? Now, don't get me wrong. I go and eat. Now, I'm finally moving. At first, I was like, mm-mm. At first, I'll nothing. Stuff delivered. I'll eat. Yeah, I'll eat. I go and eat. At first, but, I, didn't, I didn't, but I eat. Yeah, I'll eat. Like, Atlanta, North Florida, my hometown. And it's like, I'm picking the group of my friends who I'm going to be with. I get tested like every week, every two weeks on the show. Me like, too. I'm even going Friday. and We're not even filming right now. Like I, I get so tested to tomorrow to go to a Nick game. Yeah, They I'm just let fans in there and, they got, and the Knicks test you to see if you got COVID that to was. allow you to go. I get tested every week. And every it's week. like, we're going to live. I do say live, but it's just the shit people are doing. Like, y'all having a full-on part. First, I don't want to go to. I'm gonna meet somebody with a damn mask on. It's like shit. Just Facetime me. The damn yeah, shit. Yeah. Um, and, and so me, I've been curving a lot of friends. Yeah. Shout to. out to my they, brother they, they Nori. Listen, let me tell you something. 
at least once to twice a week, I would eat dinner with Nori, his wife, his beautiful wife, my wife, and we would, that's our shit. We would go with Nori to eat, you know, and drink and have fun. And I haven't seen him since COVID, right? Wow. And so he hits me every morning at six in the morning. I see everybody else more than I see you, right? And, but this guy, every single night, is with a posse of 30 guys with no fucking mask on. No and mask. I'm like, yo, no. bro, even this guy is the bionic COVID guy? And I wish him no harm. Or oh, what the fuck going on? Like, I'm like, yo, bro, this guy's doing shit, football I'm... tournaments, basketball tournaments, all type of shit. He got the rucker in Miami. I'm like, yo, this guy is like, and I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I don't yeah. like, Yo, the shit is crazy, though. It's crazy how when I watch CNN every morning, I get depressed. And I'm like, all right, people are dying. People are oh, yeah, that's COVID like, TV. I watch it every day. It's, I it's depressing. CNN. This shit is depressing. It's COVID it's TV. Crazy. It's COVID it's just, TV. I don't know what it is out there, but there's some shit out there. Thank God I didn't get it. Yes. I've had, and what's crazy, I've no, no, got people the COVID. around me that had it. They got the COVID. I went to New York. I went to a restaurant. Rayo's, which is the most exclusive spot Italian okay. in New York ever in the history. You can't get in there. They turned Madonna down. I went up in there and half the guys were like, yo, I had COVID already. I had COVID already. I went to my dentist today. God bless Nieves. I asked her assistant, yo, where's Nieves? She was like, oh, she got the COVID. That motherfucker got the COVID all over. Yeah, for that like part. It ain't like and they it ain't the COVID. Like everybody got the COVID. Mm -hmm. It's and sad. Some people though, it's different. Um, some I want to have to uh, side effects, and some do. Your 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 store. The, is yes, it a store my showroom. Or, what's the sexy? It's a showroom. <laughs> it's a showroom, darling. <laughs> so it's called La. Oh, listen, Joe. Remember when we went to eat in shops of Buckhead at um. We went and ate at that Italian place one night. Remember? Yes, yes, yes. It's right downstairs. It's in Shops of oh, that's Buckhead. That's a beautiful place. It's right downstairs from that restaurant we ate at. You remember that night we went up there and yeah. it was late night? Yeah. So it's and I tell them, I archive. tell them the Italian guy opened up in Miami too. We went over there. Remember, it was Captain's birthday. Definitely. And we Definitely. threw a party there. Incredible yeah. food. It was so and, good. And that mall is beautiful and. I know I cut you off, but what, I'm trying to make a point. When I do sh this show and I talk about hip hop and all that, I'm talking, I'm commentating from experience. And you opening up a fly boutique, you are fashion. You are fly. That is a natural progression for you. It's only uh -huh. like people were probably like, what took us so long to open the fly boutique it. in Atlanta? But no, let me tell you this. I had the Flyers Boutique in Atlanta 15 years ago. Mm. I had Toria Wright, Eva Marcel. Um, what's the basketball player name? Uh, damn, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. Uh, everyone was shopping with me. It was called the Red Carpet at Perimeter Mall. Mm. So I was ahead of my time. Atlanta wasn't ready for my fashions at the time. So I had the flyer stuff. So I closed it, shield. You know, I had a cute coin, which if I was smart, I would have kept it open. But um, mm. now what I did, I was laying in the bed one day. And right now I'm in my closet. It's a mess. I'm just letting you see this little part. So I'm in my closet. I'll tell you a story real quick. I asked somebody, what is, uh, you know, because Luther, rest in peace, Luther Van Jones, my favorite singer of all time. And his close friends told me that he had the biggest house, a mansion in Connecticut. But the only place he would meet you is in his closet. And his closet was so big, and Luther wanted to talk to you in the fucking closet, looking at his clothes. That. <laughs> That's crazy, right? I would love that, because in my new closet, I'm going to have a bar, and I have cameras everywhere in my closet, because I got trust issues. So it will be like, say if it's my best friends, I'm like, well, I can't find that Hermes bracelet. They're like, girl, we're not thinking about you. Go look at the cameras. Ain't nobody stole your damn bracelet. So, I'm, so I have cameras. I feel like this is a place like, right now, I got three people in here. We have drinks. Like, we're, when we hang up with you, we're going to sit in here and just drink, chill. And it's like, this is one of my favorite places because I could never, like, you know, in foster care, I told you, I didn't feel as fabulous. What's crazy, when I live with my mom in the projects, 
I felt fabulous. I was just getting abused. But my mom would go to the Goodwill and we were the best dressed damn kids in the projects. She'd be washing <laughs> her clothes in the tub. So when I went to Boston, I'm like, shit, I need to feel pretty again. Like, you know, I miss my little dresses and my ruffles. Mm -hmm. So I'm extra just because. And anyone watching, don't be afraid to be extra. Be you. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to follow people. And if a person don't like you for who you are, the hell with them. Fuck them. Because I'm going to live my best life. And I'm not marching to the beat of your drum. I'm marching to the beat of my own. And I got some weird ass. I'm off beat like a motherfucker. But it's an amazing tune. Yeah, yeah, Marlo, I do that. I, I've been using hate and negative energy as fuel. It fuels me to be successful. I almost love when somebody sleeps on me or hates on me or whatever because I go harder. In fact, they hear me every night talking shit to imaginary competition. It don't even be competition. <laughs> I'm like, I'm the biggest. Fuck everybody doing this. I'm exactly. I lie to myself and tell me somebody's hating somewhere. No. So the show could be incredible. If you don't have a hater, something's wrong. So they motivate me. I love it. And I could really have them hating. I'm like, if I just take this phone and do a spin around. But in the beginning of Instagram, that was exciting to post everything you get. And now I'm like, I ain't posting that shit. They'll see it when they see it. Like, you know, but Joe, we're going to have haters. Just do you. We have to just Listen, listen I, I do something, but I'm not going to do that uh, to you. I always ask everybody, well, some people, what's their top five rappers? But I'm going to ask you, who are your top five, dead or alive, best dressed celebrities ever? Best dressed celebrities ever. Damn, my brother, it's so sad because I'm going to butcher their names on my drinks. Okay, best dressed celebrities ever. I would definitely say, um, who do I love the best dress? Um, how the hell? Uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. I love her style. She's fly. Fly in a mug. It ain't, it's not about tight shit. It's about fashion with her. I love Tracy Ellis Ross. What's the one lady I lo love that's... Um, in uh, Europe, um, I think we got an thing. I can't think of her name. I love some fly. Let me see who else. Terrell. I mean, he ain't a celebrity, but he is a celebrity. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Around Terrell's you. That's the best everybody. Man Terrell is. Period. He's the flyest on the planet Earth. Uh, what's I'll the take girl that. name? Joe. What's the girl name? Um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Marlo Hampton. That bitch uh -huh. died. That bitch, he queen. Yo, Marlo, you <laughs> all fly, Marlo. Let me tell you something, Marlo. I said no, one day, I uh, said. Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh. I, I, I love the way Sarah Jessica Parker dressed. And uh, who else would I say? There's so many damn people. She picked Terrell. Terrell the flyest. He's an Aquarius <laughs> like me. Joe, Terrell and I are both Aquarius. It's the flyest in the game. He taught me everything I know. I love Terrell. When I tell you, I love me some Terrell. Everybody look him up on Instagram, Terrellish. No, that's another one. Yeah, my but brother, um, my stylist. You got one more. Everything. You're not really. You're not trying to give me one more. One more. Fly is dress up. Um, Prince. Prince. That I got a Prince story. You see, they think I'm crazy, right? Prince used I'm, to be got, fly, baby. <laughs> I got a Prince story for their ass. And they don't know who I know. And they and, and, and this is a joker moment. Because <laughs> no, I they laugh when they don't know who I know. Like they don't know I'm who like, I know. When they talk, I'd be like, I sit with Joe Lorena, Callie. Yeah, no. Marlo, these people think I'm crazy, man. And then and it, it, but but listen what I'm saying, Prince. I met one time with his manager. She was his manager for many, many years, right? Okay. She, she was his manager, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say, for instance, Uncle Dan is part of my management team. Okay. As soon as I turn this off, my stinking ass is going to put some shorts on in the tank top and watch the game. <laughs> she managed Prince for 20 years. She told me he has never come downstairs in his house without a three-piece suit on or some fly shit with some jewelry in his house. She's like, yo, 
The man would change six times a day in the house. That's and she'd be like, Prince, why the jury? Oh, because where I come from, <laughs> we got to shit on them. We got to give it to you. Every chance she was like, yo, he would come downstairs, fly shit, go back up, change, fly. She never in 20 years seen him not fly. Wow. I believe it. I believe it. And I live for it. I love it. When I tell you I would have a bad day, Joe, I would be like, bring me a bottle. Like, I just had a bottle of done. What was that? 08, 2008, done the other night. I'm like, she's like, you're going to pop. I want to say what that bottle was, like 800 or something. I'm like, bring that bottle up to my room, put some music on. I was in this bitch just putting looks together. But that's my happy place. And my happy place, because I feel good. I feel beautiful. I make me happy. It's not just about you making me feel good. And that's you got to do what makes you happy. And I'm a beat fly. And I, who's, days that Marlo, I who's your real friend outside of the camera on the show? Who's my real friend outside of the show on the camera? Who's my real friend? Yo, oh, shit, damn, Marlo. Yo, you found my man. my yeah. real friend. I can't do it, yo, Marlo. From St. Pete from middle school, my cousin. Tamala Rosebud, <laughs> my manager, Ty. You ain't really Justin. fucking with them like that, huh? No, I fuck with these girls as in I love them. They're black queens. We are so blessed because we all have stories, but they're not my real friend to where they can't. The way I see if you're my real friend, I've had my nephews for a year and a half. These girls don't call and check on me. They know I'm new to motherhood. Um, we have a couple of the girls who have been fans of the show before they when I was on the show and they were fans and they looked up to me. You feel me? So I don't feel it's a real friend because I feel even when work is over, you check on your friends. At the end of the day, you say, hey, that girl is doing good. Let me just, hey, how are your nephews doing? It's their birthday. I heard you say they got straight A's. Let me send them something. So we got all these bosses on the show, but they're really just, you know, it is what it is. But my real friends are from St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah, you, you just get story. money. You get money. I, we I understand. Work with them. We're cool. Marlo. Go ahead. We're what cool. You say? But no, me and the girls, it's like a couple of them I'm cool with. I can't call on the phone and talk to. Like I'll talk to Candy. I'll talk to Kenya. But I wouldn't say like these are not the girls I'm calling, like, oh my God, my dad did this or my mom did this. I'm not they're not my, you know, when you say real friends, I'm thinking. No, 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 I mean real friends. I mean, in the there's hood. plenty of guys that dap up in the industry and all that. But when I say. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I mean, they're associates, friends. you know, <laughs> not real friends. Listen, sis, I love you, Marlo. Keep being fly. Keep being beautiful. I can't wait to see you once COVID loosens up. Or oh, you might want to escape. Yo, so you're escaping. Out. Catherine is escaping. You know, her and Loretta birthday the same time. We going I, to the tropics. I know. I may have to get out for CB birthday. She called me for Terrell's, but I was like, I'm a little scared. But uh, I don't I may know. But we to. go to the island where they test you twice, and you're on the beach so with a mango I may need to be there. trees. So y'all let me know because I'm gonna be there. And make sure you tell everyone who doesn't spend like us and want the designer goods to check out the archive at Shops of Butthead, Joe. All the ladies. Come the all archive ladies. is the flyest shit moving the in archive. Atlanta. ATL, all get to it. All designer pieces. Let me ask you something. Who is, I wanted years. to ask you a question. Who is your, your customer? Who is your, 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 your who, what is your customer? I, I'm customer just curious any, as a, as a guy. My customer is any lady with a credit card that goes through. <laughs> <laughs> Any lady with a credit card that goes through. They get approved. Because say, like, I have my first Valentino gown that I paid $30,000 for in Paris. So I know another lady isn't going to pay that for the gown. I wore it on the show, I want to say, season four. Ooh. They had flowers all over it. But guess what? She may want to rent it for $1,000 for the night. So anyone who credit card can hold a deposit and can swipe that card and return it, you're my customer. I don't care if you're not a celebrity. Your beacon score need to be at least a 700 or higher because I know they care about their credit. So anybody, any lady with a credit score 700 above, she's my customer. Yo, Marlo, I love you, man. Do your thing. I love you too. God bless, all right? Love you, love you. you. I'll see you thank soon. Thank you, thank you. Stay I'll safe, see you soon. Lorena and the baby and Terrell, everybody, kisses and hugs. I will. God bless you. Bye, love. Bye-bye.